Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this really fun video where I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build a Chrome extension that will be able to help you um, stop procrastinating on your studies or your work. Um, basically what it does is when you go to a website such as YouTube, um, you'll see that it doesn't let you actually go to the, the to the website. It will redirect you or at least edit all the HTML on the page to this. And there's nothing you can do other than just turning off the extension, obviously. Uh, but it works on other pages as well. Um, you can go to Netflix. It, it is customizable. So when you go to Netflix, it says um, Netflix is <laughs> studying is better than Netflix. Um, you can go to something like um, Facebook. And you'll see that it isn't like just the fa the, the main page, like facebook.com. If I try to go to, for example, um, facebook.com, uh, Facebook Marketplace, right? I'll come over here. You'll see that it will still block because it is not basing itself on the actual domain over here. It's based on the host name. Um, we can add more layers of security or prevention if we want to, but I want to keep this simple. It's a great, a great introduction to how create how to create actual like Chrome extensions, and I think it will be pretty nice. You can see that this UI over here for the page it was heavily inspired by this that I found here um, on CodePen. I'm gonna leave the link to this in the description. We're not gonna be focusing on a HTML and CSS for this tutorial because the whole point is making the extension and the logic behind it. So I, would, I actually just copy and pasted this. Um, the credit for it is in the description. Check out. It, it looks pretty nice. Okay, so as you can see, we have here, um, we opened up a single folder inside of our computer and called it Chrome X XT, something like that. And we can call it whatever you want. It's just a, the folder where your code is going to be located at. So what we want to do uh, whenever we want to create a Chrome extension is we want to create a file inside of our folder called uh, manifest.json. This will contain all the comfort configuration information for the specific um, extension that you're creating and it is necessary to, to have it or else Chrome won't be able to recognize your project as an extension. And over here, we do need to write some JSON. However, what I recommend is there's just some certain things that are important to change inside of this file. Um, and I'm going to show you guys which one of them I'm talking about. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put a version for this manifest. So we need to declare a, a something called manifest version. And here we kind of just put like, uh, a number uh, since it's the first one we'll pick one but like it just means that um, this is the first time we edited the manifest then we want to put a name for our project or our extension I'll call it something like work uh, tracker or procrastinate like uh, I'll actually I'll call it social media blocker something like that and then we also need to put some other information like the version of the project. So if you want to create different versions for your for your application for your Chrome extension, and you launch them, you can put the version over here. So right now, let's just put 0 0.0.1. Uh, whatever you want to do, you can put whatever number over here, this is going to appear in the real like Chrome store determining which version your app is in. And then this is very important, we need to put content scripts. Now, I wouldn't worry that much about understanding what they do. Um, especially in the beginning, but basically you need to pass here an array um, containing uh, basically all the different content scripts that you want to have in your application, such as the JavaScript files that you want to be listening to and uh, their their actual paths. So what I want to do here is I'll put, first of all, a matches property. Oh, and I also need to open an object inside of here. So I'll put a matches property like this. And this will basically say that I want my application to run and I can put all the URLs that I want my application to 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 like be functional on. And since I want my blocker to work on mostly every single web page, I'll just put a tag over here saying um, all URLs and this will be able to satisfy what we want. And then we need to direct what is the JavaScript file that we want to run when our extension is actually working. So this is basically what is the entry point of your extension? Where is the code going to be located? So I'll put it here JS to say that it is a JavaScript file. And then I'll pass here an array and the name of the files that include JavaScript that we want to listen. Um, so I'll create one over here, I like to call it uh, content .js, like this. And right over here, I can just put the name of the file. So I'll call it content .js. And now our extension when we load this to Google Chrome, it will know that we are only running the or re, at least in this case, we're running the code that exists inside of the file content.js. 
we can put many other things over here we can put an icon to our thing um, I'm not gonna do that uh, but one thing we actually have to do if we want to add any HTML to our extension is we can come over here and actually specify which HTML files we want to to run uh, I don't care that much about that right now uh, initially let's just write the code that will be able to block the different social media web pages so basically we are kind of done with the initial part with the configuration part and we can start actually running our or writing our code that will serve as the logic for our extension so instead of this content.js what we want to do is we got to take it into account that every time you enter into a web page it's going to load our extension so it's going to recognize that we opened a new uh, website and it's going to run this content.js file so technically what we can do is um, we can just put some sort of code like direct JavaScript like an alert message over here and put a simple uh, I don't know simple message like hey guys um, and if we and before we actually just check this out um, one thing that I actually forgot to say is that at least for the development uh, a version while we're debugging right now we'll have to set this equal to two sorry that I said one first um, we need to set this up to two or else it literally won't run your your extension and the Chrome developer um, panel so you need to set this to two or else it won't work so what we want to do now is we want to come here to our Chrome um, extensions uh, URL which is inside of your Google Chrome you can just check it out it's where all your extensions are and you'll see that there's a simple toggle over here called developer mode you just click on that like this and you'll see that it will appear all the like this small little bar over here you just click on load unpacked and put the path towards where your your actual folder are so my folder is chrome axed um, that's how I called my co my project so I'll just put the path to here and I'll just open inside of this directory and you'll see that now the so the project the extension that we created is appearing over here you see that the name and the version that we inputted is actually correct and you'll see that it's it turned on right now so uh, if you want to turn it off you just pull this toggle but if you want to turn it on and actually test it you just do it like this so let's test what's happening if I actually go to somewhere like um, I'll go to Google uh, like this uh, you'll see that um, it should alert a message saying hey guys right um, it's working perfectly if I go to my YouTube channel um, like this uh, Pedro tag I'll go to my community tab you'll see that it will alert the message again the the actual extension will run every single time you open a new web page which means it's working so if we want to this was just a test now we want to actually write the logic to 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 make it so that it will block whenever we visit a new web page that is a social media platform so to do that what we need to think about is like this so this will run every time you open a new website so Technically, what we can just ask is if the actual website URL includes um, some sort of uh, social media uh, host, right? So, for example, if you go to any YouTube um, website, any YouTube URL, it will have a host name of www.youtube.com. That's that's the standard. It doesn't really matter which kind of tab you're inside of YouTube. Most of them will have this hosting. So, what we can do is we can do a simple if statement over here asking if window dot location dot host name is equal to um, something like www.youtube.com then we want to do something uh, for now let's just alert a message saying uh, you are in YouTube now let's save this file and if you want to see the changes again you just need to click on this refresh button over here and it will automatically recognize now if I go to my actual to, to something like google.com you'll see that um, it won't alert anything because we're not in a, in a website with a host name of YouTube but if I go to my uh, YouTube um, web page you'll see that um, it should alert a message saying you are in YouTube uh, <laughs> that's actually wrong English but basically you can see that it is working it is recognizing that we're going to a YouTube web page and it is kind of uh, writing some JavaScript based on that so what we want to do now is we we're gonna do this for many different web pages not just for YouTube so we want to make it so that the code is as organized as possible so that we don't we can easily add a new web page that we want to block right so the thing what I want to do is I want to actually make a, a switch case over here uh, and so we don't have like a bunch of if else statements and I'll write switch and the condition is well if the window dot location dot hosting and the different cases will be basically the different um, hosts uh, that we want to block so for example a first case will be um, 
www.youtube.com, uh, right? And we're going to put some logic inside of here for this specific case. And at the end, we're just going to break uh, our actual switch case. So this is going to be the format, we're going to write some sort of message over here, uh, saying, this is YouTube, something like that. Um, and we want to do this for many different uh, websites. For example, we just come over here and just keep pasting um, the different cases and changing it to like Facebook, uh, maybe Netflix, uh, we're not going to do all of them. Um, right now, because it is better to actually start implementing the logic to how we're going to actually change the whole web page and prevent people from actually seeing this stuff. So let's do that actually first. One cool thing that you will realize is that you can just run JavaScript, right? Any JavaScript that you like, you've used before, you can just run it over here, and it will automatically impact the page. So for example, when you go to YouTube, you'll see that uh, it will actually show uh, the the web page like like this, right, it will show this page over here, it has all the HTML inside of it. However, I can edit it very, very simply by coming to our our code, and just accessing the the, the actual HTML by saying document dot. Um, let's see what, what do we want to access inside of the document, let's access the body tag, because I know that every web page has a body tag. And let's change its inner HTML to be equal to something like um, I don't know, I'll, I'll make a, a button, right? You can actually put HTML inside of here and change it. So I'll make a button. Um, and just say something like click here. Now if we save this, and go to our Google Chrome and refresh the extension, you see that now if I try to go to YouTube again, uh, it will uh, actually replace everything for a single button. And now if we try to go to YouTube again, um, you'll see that it will replace everything in the screen to a single button, as you can see right here, right? So it changed the whole HTML to the button, which is amazing. So um, basically, if we want to change it to that specific page that we created the the 404 page with the beautiful animation, something like that. Um, again, the link for the code is in the description, what I want to do is I want to come over here. And I will create a function called generate HTML like this, and it will take on a single argument, which will be the the name of the website where we're, we're showing this. So for example, for YouTube, we'll put YouTube for Facebook, we'll put Facebook just so that each page, each page is customizable. And we'll put page name over here. And instead of here, we're going to return some HTML, and we're going to use back ticks instead of normal strings so that we can just write a huge HTML, um, uh, like HTML, like actual web page inside of this function so that it doesn't fit all of it inside of a single line. So the HTML we're going to be using, I'm just going to copy and paste it. But again, the link for it is in the description, you can see over here, it is very basic. All we do is we're just returning a div where it has some IDs, it have a couple of divs inside of it to represent the clouds. And it has all the different texts that we want. For example, for the first uh, title, I said get back to work. And then I say studying is greater or better than um, whichever page name we, we put for this function. So now, if I want to generate this and change the HTML inside of uh, YouTube, for example, uh, to be something similar to this, I just have to come over here and say this is equal to generate HTML and pass the name of the website. So I'll pass for example, YouTube over here. And if we come to our application, we reload this, we go to YouTube again, you'll see that now, um, it should actually render everything and then change it back to the simple HTML that we created, you might be wondering, okay, but this doesn't look like the page you showed in the beginning of the video. Well, because we need to add some styling, we need to add some CSS. So similar to what we did here with um, the HTML, I'm going to create a function over here, um, called generate um, styling. And I'm going to set it equal, it doesn't take any arguments. Um, all it does is it re returns a style tag. Uh, which is the CSS that we want to use. So I'll say return. And over here, I'll use back ticks again. And I'll just put the styles, um, just copy and paste the styles, which again, you can access in the description. Okay, as you can see, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot of CSS, which I didn't write myself. But you can see, uh, if we actually generate this, um, and at the end, we we just call this function, it should be working. But we don't want to put the styling inside of the body. Um, the style tags usually put on the head. So I'll just come over here and say document dot head dot inner HTML is equal to generate styling. And now we'll change the actual CSS of the web page to satisfy what we uh, copied from the, the code pen um, animation that I, that, that I searched for. So this should be working right here. 
Um, what we want to do is we want to go to our Chrome extension tab and we'll reload it again and just see if it looks like um, the extension that I created in the beginning. And you can see clearly that it does. Um, it says it has a beautiful animation. It says 404, get back to work, setting is better than YouTube. And it doesn't matter. I can go to, uh, I don't know, I'll put this video, how to eliminate shoulder pain. It's a video that I watched. I have shoulder pain. So I'll just click on this and you'll see that it won't work. It will redirect you to this page, which um, is very handy. Um, the only negative side is that uh, you can just turn the extension off. But to be honest, just it's just a cool little project that will teach you at least the basics of creating some Chrome extensions. And now let's implement this for the other websites as well. I'll come over here, just copy this and paste it over here. And it will automatically do it. We don't need to copy all the styling and HTML because we actually created functions for them. So uh, instead of being YouTube, let's say Facebook, um, like this, Facebook, and we'll do the same for Netflix. And you can do this for any like every single website. So I'll put for Netflix, what other website do I use a lot um, while I'm studying? Um, let me think. Oh, I forgot to put a case. Uh, let's just put a case over here. Um, I'll say maybe maybe some spot. No, I like using Spotify. Um, let's block maybe some discord, right? Uh, imagine if you if you use a lot of discord, um, I'll just come over here, put the host name for discord. And we can put this over here, change this to discord, and save it. Now let's load all of this. And obviously, you can add any websites you want. Um, let's just refresh this. Let's try to go to discord. You'll see, uh, actually, discord uh, doesn't have the www for its host name. Let's just keep it like this. And I recommend looking specifically for which uh, host names will work for discord. I know this as for a fact that it doesn't have the www. So we don't put that or else it won't work. So let's come here to our actual extensions tab. And let me refresh my extension. And let's go to um, test it, right? Let's go to Netflix. You'll see that Netflix um, doesn't allow me to Let's go to Facebook. Oh, I actually searched for something wrong. Let's go to, <laughs> to Facebook. You'll see it doesn't allow me to and it is in <laughs> changes a bit based on Facebook because maybe the HTML is kind of it's kind of ruined inside of the web page. Um, let's go to something like what else did I put I put discord. Um, let's go to discord. You see it doesn't allow me to go to it as well. So this is basically it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a really quick video. Uh, I just wanted to record because I some some of you guys have been asking me for this specific extension because I may I, I mentioned it in my previous Chrome extension video. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I post two to three times a week and I would massively appreciate it if you guys could support the channel grow. Um, we're growing at a very fast rate and I can't I couldn't be more grateful for that. So I really appreciate it if you guys um, can just help me out. Uh, let's hit 20k maybe um, by the end of summer. So yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.